Okay, hey guys, it's me again. Um, so since I've posted all those videos, I uh, found out some new bits of info and I'm playing again so I was going to do kind of a, a quicker, hopefully a shorter follow-up video to kind of clarify a couple of things that I had uh, since found out that I had made a mistake on and then some new situations that are arising. Um, so the first and most important one is uh, the use of this reaction table. So let's take uh, let's take this one right here. So intelligence three, um, aggression seven. We see there a four, a five, and a ten. Um, let's say I rolled a six. You use that as your ba your base number is six. It's higher than four and higher than five. Uh, you would take the highest out of the two of those, so that would be the five, which matches the move. It's in the parentheses there, so it's a move slash kill. Um, what I was doing before was I was counting one, two, three, four as a flea. Um, five in this case would be a move, and then six to ten is a kill, which left eleven and twelve as nothing. I just had it backwards. Basically, one, two, three is nothing. Um, four is a flea. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine is a move, and then ten, eleven, twelve is a kill. Hopefully, that makes a little more sense to you. So here's a little situation that we had that arose. Uh, mouse was... Okay, so... Um, how the heck do you say that name? Char... Charbdis... Uh, had... Started the game here, moved eventually into the hallway where there was a medikit. There was a creature in this room as well that he fought and killed. Um, he took some damage, so he took control of the medikit and has been healing himself. So while he was healing himself, um, I decided that, you know, for the movement phase, uh, I may as well take the time to scan the rooms around me because I didn't actually want to move to a room. I want to just stay put where I know that it's safe and use my turns to keep healing myself. Uh, right now he's healed himself up to a seven again. I think he was down to like a four or a three, I believe. Um, so that strategy has been working pretty good. Uh, so when he scanned C3, this pod, he discovered mouse was there. Uh, we found a couple of uh, mouse's attributes as intelligence and aggression. Uh, intelligence was a five, aggression was a three. Um, and then through the, the role, we found that he fleed. So what I, I think I've kind of pieced together from the, the rules, and I think mostly the, the house rules, is that um, even when you're scanning, they're still going to react. Uh, if it's a flea, he's gonna, the creature is going to want to leave whatever section or compartment he's in. And again, if he was in here, it's a random dice roll to see. However you want to do that dice roll, this is maybe a one, a two, a three, four, a five, or a six, and then he would move to the corresponding room. In the book, it suggests if, it, if um, he was here, you'd do a dice roll for this room, you'd do a dice roll for this room, you'd do a dice roll for this room. Creatures can't go into the riser areas. These are kind of like a safe zone. Uh, so he only has three choices. So you do a dice roll for each of them. The highest number is where he would eventually flee to. But since he was here, there was no other place for him to flee but into the room with me. Now, we've done a reaction phase to him in this room. So just because now he's joined us in our the room that we're currently in doesn't mean we have to do a reaction again. We've already done it. Now skip ahead to going through all the cycles of the turn and now we're back to the beginning again. 
we haven't moved from this room. We did a scan of the next room, but we didn't enter or exit this room. So again, you don't have to do a reaction uh, check with him again since there's been no movement. Now, when I leave this room, we'll have to do a reaction check to see if he either flees or he might get a move reaction, which would be he'd just follow me to the next room. That is if I decide to go there, wherever I decide to go. Um, so that's that's pretty important. How to deal with the critters is pretty important, or the, the specimens as they're called in the game. A couple of things happened for scrawling up in this section here. You can see, again, I got, I got lucky with one of the players. The room that he started in was the restraint pod, this, in this case restraint pod number two. You can see that there's a, a critter or a specimen under there, Grendel, uh, who's stunned and now restrained. Uh, originally Grendel appeared here, so I've been taking things a lot more carefully than I, than I did last game. So when he started the game, I scanned this room and uh, just stayed where I was and I'll kind of recreate this here. So these three items, uh, an enviro rig, a comp kit, and then Grendel appeared there. So did the same thing, found out Grendel's stats. Grendel was uh, intelligence of two and aggression of eight. Um, when you do a scan, uh, three is subtracted during the upcoming reaction phase from the intelligence rating of a specimen that is scanned. So his intelligence was two. You can't go into a negative number. So the, re the lowest number on the reaction uh, table is a one. So his just went down to the base of one. So that's one important thing to remember. Um, he still had a reaction of trying to kill us. So we fought. Um, eventually I worked him down. You can see Scrawling took quite a beating though. I think he started the game at a six and now he's sitting at a three. Um, we eventually knocked him out. So he was stunned. Uh, we came up to step three, which is the acquisition phase. I decided that I wanted to pick him up, pick up Grendel and see if I could carry him on my next turn, carry him back into A4 so I could put him in the restraint pod and then gain those victory points. I rolled for his weight. His weight was a four. Scrawling's port is a six, so easily carried uh, with two left over. Now, the important thing to remember, again, is that at the end of all your steps, so step four being the last one, which is the equipment phase, um, where you can use the equipment that you've, uh, that you've taken over during the previous step. After all those are done and you restart the turn, basically, you have to do a stun removal phase. At that point, his shield rating was a four, so it's a roll of a dice. And if you get a four, in this case again, a four or less, he awakens again, even if you are carrying him. So just because I'm carrying him doesn't mean that I get to bypass that phase. Uh, I guess you can think of it as you've knocked this creature out and you're grabbing it and you threw it over your shoulder to kind of take it to a restraint pod. And as you were walking, it, it uh, just sprung back to life. And because again, it springs back to life um, after a after you come out of a stun phase, so if in this case he was stunned, he came, oh, he woke up basically again, we have to do another reaction check because it's now considered a, a separate reaction. Um, he might react differently this time, seeing as he just got knocked the fuck out. Uh, in this case, he did not and attacked me again. So I was able to knock him out again and bring his shield rating down to a two. So again, I tried to pick him up, and this time because it was a two, it was a much simpler dice roll to get higher than a two, and I managed to carry him off um, in my movement turn and then dump him under the restraint pod for safekeeping and got a, after all that trouble, got a measly two victory points for doing that out of a possible six. So during that fight, because there was this enviro rig, 
um, I was wondering if that would help me out and I think I can't remember in, in the last game in the video if it came up where I utilized a piece of gear like this um, on all the tools the uh, let me just find the section here sorry um, there we go okay so tools are the portable equipment of the Pandora they include weapons kits comm devices rigs and bots robots so that enviro rig is a uh, that enviro yeah well it says right there enviro rig is a rig um, and for most things you have to roll up for their abilities uh, in this case the impair rating on this is a zero and the shield rating is a three um, instead of that being what you add to a dice roll to discover it on all these what it says on the chit is exactly what it is um, I knew that was the case for things like kits and uh, like the medical kit especially and things like that but I wasn't aware that it was on the enviro rig and I can't remember if it came up last video but basically the numbers that you see are the numbers that you get so I thought that it might help me in a battle, for example, but um, a shield rating of three is, is not really that great, especially because Scrawling is sitting at a, a five already just on his own. So the, the benefit of putting that on is nothing. The only benefit that it would have would be if I had a stun bomb or something that I could then let off because I, I had this. Um, Another thing that's important to remember while I'm on this track of thinking, if for example I had the capability of carrying, let's say, both of these items, when it came time to use an item for, whether it was for battle or whether it was for what, whatever the situation, you can only ever use one tool or piece of equipment that you're carrying. I can't, for example, use the abilities of all of the tools that I'm carrying to help me in whatever situation it was. I've got to kind of use the best, choose the best tool for the current situation and then use its numbers or capabilities for that situation just on the one of them. Um, so yeah, there you go. I, I hope that kind of makes sense to you. It's uh, as, uh, as I've been talking to a few people on, on YouTube and on the BGG forum and kind of discussing it's it's really interesting to get into games like this because it becomes so complex but once you I'm at kind of at a point now where I feel like I'm getting more of a handle on it that um, the game is running a little smoother and I, I feel like I'm getting more out of it at this stage where I can get into some of the smaller details of you know the play the turn order and using various pieces of gear to my benefit and all that sort of stuff I mean this was a just restraining, just picking up this uh, Grendel and carrying his sorry ass to the restraint pod was quite a victory for me. You know, it, it just seemed to work really well. I felt like I did everything properly and uh, <laughs> then gained the two victory points, as I've said. Uh, if something else pops up, I'll come back and uh, talk at you a little more. Another thing that came up at the beginning of the game that I couldn't quite find specific uh, wording about that I again maybe I just couldn't didn't find the appropriate section but in my looking for it I, I didn't come up with anything so I made my own house rule for the very first move of the game again I can't remember what I did for that first move in the previous game but I think I only allowed the players to if they wanted to stay in the pod just scan the pod itself um, to me that playing it starting it up this time it seems a little silly um, so I've decided to make this the house rule for the first move of the game if you want to stay in your pod there's nothing saying that you can't discover what's in the pod and take a quick peek outside um, 
again maybe it's the situation of there's a lot of there's a lot of things in a particular pod there's a lot of places to hide so while you're kind of getting your bearings where you've woken up uh, or where you've stumbled into you're really looking around so you're checking outside the porthole to see what's in the hallway in this case what's in the hallway outside and discovering what that all is and then you start to discover what's in your surroundings too maybe you find a light switch and all of a sudden everything has appeared to you uh, as far as there's some equipment off in a corner or all of a sudden a creature pops out from behind something um, it especially works with with this because there's various sizes of creatures I mean not only not only decided by their weight rating but also just the images there's some that look like they're more kind of scurrying smaller crab like creatures that uh, could just kind of run underfoot and that would be the sense of discovery um, so partially to and I, I kind of made that decision partially to speed up the beginning of the game a little more to get you right into the action a little more uh, you're, you're getting a chance to discover your pod and deal with any issues that arise there and then you're getting a little look ahead as to what's gonna be outside in the hallway and part of that I think is also due to the fact of what happened last game because of the slaughter that happened and how I felt really trapped when we started the game on that A3 and didn't get any farther than this hallway. Um, at least it gives you a little bit of a sense of what's going on now. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to move past this hallway by any stretch of it, but um, I don't know, it makes it, I, I felt, I found especially with this game, it made it, it made me jump right into it a little quicker. Uh, I could plan out my next couple of moves a little quicker and see what I wanted to do based on what appeared. So here's another good one. Um, Scrawling has uh, done a couple of things and um, eventually made his way back out here, picked up the comp kit. He's got another repair kit which I, I wasn't paying close enough attention. Scrawling's actual own personal repair is a four this kit uh, that repairs other kits is only a three so I'm going to end up dropping that again um, then he decided to again going back to the previous game about just running into a room he decided to just do a scan of A1 and this brings up another important thing uh, that I just want to doubly make clear here um, about the reacting, uh, the reacting so you're scanning another room uh, doesn't mean that the critter in there or the specimen in there doesn't see you either and react so we found the blind pig and the blind pig had an intelligence of nine aggression level of five uh, referred to our chart which I'm about to do because I'm just about to get into the reaction phase um, so in the little cheat sheet notes it says uh, all of a phasing player's units in the same space as a specimen will cause the specimen to perform a single reaction check. Um, and then from further reading, I made a note here that it's untrue. And if we refer to section 8.0, uh, whenever a phasing unit enters, occupies, exits, or visually scans a space containing a specimen, the unit may be detected by the specimen. A uh, specimen which, which detects another unit will react to that unit in one of three ways, fleeing, moving, or making a kill attempt. So I think, and, and this kind of led on the path of um, uh, how, because it's not really spelled out how it's going to react to you. If it is a kill, does that mean it's going to move to the room where you are to try to kill you? Does that mean, you know, so I think that's kind of where all the house rules and things uh, came into play. Uh, because it doesn't specifically say it um, because when it comes to the kill section it says the specimen immediately attacks and attempts to kill one other unit in the space so nowhere does it tell you that it's going to move to wherever you are if you're scanning so here's something new that happened um, and I didn't actually realize it till now I, I was in this C3 discovered the environment pod uh, which is one of our major systems on our map there um, 
rolled for its status and it came out to be a one, which you can see right there. Move the token there. Um, and then I did a hasty movement two spots. At the time, the uh, mouse was in the same room as me. And I know that there's a pretty slim chance that it's going to attack me, so I didn't worry about doing a hasty movement because I knew that this one had nothing in it. And as I said before, I already did a scan of this hallway, so I felt confident going to uh, because I wanted to get the comp com, um, which doubles my uh, doubles the rate of uh, doubles my ability. Um, my repair rating basically and Chard bis his repair rating is at a two so I desperately need that because it brings me up to a four and what that means is on the repair chart with a two there was a chance that I could damage whatever I'm fixing if I rolled a one um, at a four there's zero chance that I can damage it uh, I now have a 50 50 chance of repairing things by one or just doing nothing at all. So that's a really, really handy thing. And that's when I realized that the the other thing about the Enviropod is that it has major bearing on something that didn't come up in the last game, which was um, our main ship status by this track up here. So what happens is when you find out either the power system or the Envio system or Enviro system, uh, just those two will tell you about the cold, uh, the cold shutdown of the entire ship. I discovered this one, it was at one. You multiply that by five and that's where the status goes. Now every time we're finished a turn cycle, at the beginning of a new turn cycle, this is going to go down by one each and every time. Um, if it hits all systems down, uh, basically we've lost the game. We're not able to restart the ship. I guess at that point you can keep hunting for critters, uh, for specimens rather, and trying to trap them and that becomes the game. But you really want to try to start the ship. That's where you're getting most of your victory points, 25 victory points for that. So in a way, and the reason why I didn't rewind any of this and undo any of this is because I would have gone for this anyway because of my repair status. Uh, I would have wanted to make a run for it to grab that, to be able to run back and start working on this pod. Now, I haven't double checked yet, but I believe um, when it comes to fixing pods, I believe you can just do it on your own anyway. But as I said, since I have this comp com, it specifically says um, doubles repair rating of crew members attempting to repair major systems. And it also may control or may remote control comp pod. So the downside of that is that it is in yellow. Um, so I may gamble with my two and try to repair it myself and see if I can bring it up that one level. Uh, because when an item is in yellow status, every time you use it, you have to, once you've used it, you do a, a die roll and there's a chance if it's a one or a two that the item that you're using will go to red, which means that it's broken. And in the case of tools, uh, I think that means that it gets removed from the game and put back into our cup here to get drawn at a later time. So I don't really want to take that chance. I'd like to, I think I'll, I'd like to gamble on fixing the, uh, the item itself there and then on my next turn doing a hasty movement back to here so I can start working on this Enviropod. So what'll happen in that case, if I do end up repairing it, every time that I raise it a level, I'll not only raise this a level, but if it goes to 10, this will jump up to, uh, or sorry, if, if this goes to two, this chit will move up to 10. If it goes to three, it'll move up to 15. Goes to four, it moves up to 20. Anything past a four, 
um, we no longer have to worry about it, then I'll be able to take that off again until the power system has been discovered and we see what that level is and that might restart this whole cold shutdown. Here's a, here's a new one for you. So step two reaction phase, flee, move or kill. Uh, I was in A1, moved into the hallway to kind of start continuing on, on my way. Had to do a reaction check for the pig, the pig. The pig reacted that he wanted to kill me. Um, according to what I've been reading, what happens is the pig attacks, I take some damage, I, I do a counter attack, the pig takes some damage. In this case we each took one damage. You can see I'm dangerously low here. Um, which got me thinking about something I had crossed out here previously thinking that you know once you're in a battle you're locked in a battle it's funny how a situation and a character almost dying will make you go well maybe that was pretty hasty uh, because the the bonus of doing it the way that it was originally here was that this phase happens then you still have a chance to acquire, you still have your acquisition phase. If for example I moved into this hallway, this skirmish happened uh, and there was say a stun gun or a laser or something, some weapon on the ground, this would give me a chance to jump on it and grab it and use it in my favor. Um, everybody's seen the scenes in the movies where there's a big fight happening one of the two drops the gun it gives them a chance it gives somebody a chance to dive for it and kind of get it and deliver that final blow uh, similar thing here from what I'm guessing same kind of idea it gives you that one last chance to well this this fucking thing is gonna attack me because what also happens here is that with the house rules that this guy sky grazer had done was that um, he included an element called flee. If your speed was higher than the speed of the enemy, you could take that opportunity to just get the hell out of the room. Uh, it would give you a chance to run. Now because I haven't discovered this area as low as I am, because I haven't discovered this area and this is the direction I want to go because I've already seen in these pods I decided that I didn't want to flee I don't even I don't want to flee I'd rather stay and engage uh, the blind pig and take my chances with him instead of taking my chances with what might be in this room that I'm going to awaken and then maybe kick my ass so at this point now during the equipment phase is when the fight would continue and now it has to be played out till its end which is uh, till one of us is dead or stunned okay so here's a new scenario in our game that has happened um, in a previous room I found this U-Bot uh, when I checked its status as you do so what happens is when you discover a robot um, they become kind of part of your team. I think this happened in the previous game too, but I, I wanted to clarify a little more on this because we're in a situation that's different. So when I first discovered the U-Bot back in one of these other places, um, he came up as green, which means that he's in fine working order, so he follows me. We did a little trip through and we eventually discovered another two robots. Um, I did the checks on them. The uh, Imri bot here turned up green. Uh, the Specky bot here is the one to look out for because this one is on yellow. So, bots in condition yellow may be berserk. Whenever a bot is first discovered and found to be in condition yellow or is repaired to condition yellow, or when that bot enters condition yellow as a result of a combat, a die is rolled. On a roll of one or two only, the bot becomes berserk. Flip the counter over to indicate this fact. It automatically reacts in the same manner as a specimen. Berserk bots have an intelligence rating of 9 and an aggression rating of 9. Berserk bots do not roll for degradation like other equipment in yellow condition. Uh, berserk bots may be made non-berserk only if reduced to condition red and then repaired to condition green. 
Berserk bots, which are repaired only to condition yellow, continue to be uh, Berserk. So that's where we're at with this guy. If he does become Berserk, that means he's going to attack, which is also going to bring us into another new territory because there's three of us here. Oh, let's, let's aim at what I'm shooting. Um, if he does become yellow it's and attacks, it's going to be different. We're going to have to decide who he attacks, which is more dice rolls. He might end up attacking one of the robots instead of me, which would be a great thing. Um, unless, of course, he attacks the robots and brings them down to level, then we may be in a really bad situation where we have uh, three berserk robots attacking us, which would really fucking suck. So... What else was I going to mention about this here? Um, I think that was it for now. There was also the use of tools, something that came up for tools too, which maybe I'll throw in at this point as well. Um, when I'd said before, if you have amassed a, a chunk of tools that you could only use one, you could only use one tool of each type is what it was. So as we've seen before, there's um, different categories of tool as far as like a kit, um, the, the rigs are a type of tool, um, there's calm and yeah, this one's calm as well too. So you can actually use one of each type. So all that build up for nothing. We got a six. So that means it's not berserk, but what it does mean is that um, whatever bot is first discovered and found to be in condition yellow, it may become berserk. So now that we've done that check and we see that it's not berserk, it stays in condition yellow. Obviously, I'm going to try to repair it. Um, I have a comp kit and then I have my own ability. Scrawlings is, his repair is a four. So I've got a 50-50 chance of repairing the, the uh, bot there, which is good to know because I can try that in this phase. And if I can, then all of a sudden I've got quite a team to uh, start wandering through, um, which will be good getting into this room because we have a uh, specimen in that room. And a restraint pod there too. Maybe we can go and clean up this level. Uh, the way things are going for, since we're doing these videos again, let's just fill you in. Um, Chatteris is having quite the game. Uh, it's quite a different game from the last one I played. He's he's managed to find himself a... Let me just see here. He's managed to find himself this scanner, which turns out to be a, a fantastic little tool. Um, because in step one of the turn sequence, you can move into a space, do a hasty movement, or just take a peek. So what I've been doing is hanging out in the hallways and taking a peek into one room. When it comes to step four, which is like the utilizing tools section, uh, or utilizing equipment, equipment phase rather, uh, that scanner allows me to scan another adjacent room. So basically twice per turn I've been allowed to scan and it's been coming up zero, you know, with nothing in my way. No creatures, no tools or anything either, but uh, he's really had it easy on this side of the world compared to what's going on down here. So who knows what's left in here. He's also managed to find a few or more of the main computer systems and right now he's working on the power pod because that's the other one that can put us into cold storage it started at 3 so it was up on 15 and then he managed to fix it one already so one more shot and he's fixed it uh, the other two or two of the other ones that we've discovered are the comp and con levels uh, or sorry, the, the, the calm level, the chit says con. Um, and we were able to fix all those up to their maximum, which is nine, which will help us when we try to start the, the spaceship again. So here's a new exciting twist. Um, we still have the specky bot and we still have the comp kit. 
under scrawling here. Scrawling has made it to the next level and started doing a sweep through, um, scanned a room, uh, specimen in there, decided to walk away in hopes of, because we found this stun rod, I'm hoping that he can find a piece of gear, which he did, this armor rig, so eventually he can go and he'll just have to deal with that creature there to get that piece of gear to put on to use the stun rod to stun this mother to bring him to the, to the restraint pod. And luckily enough, what we found is this. This is the decon pod. And what this does is I've separated these two robots because this turns out to be a remote control for um, the Emery bot, the Eva bot, and the U bot. So I have two of the three robots. So basically what I can do is I check the status. It was yellow. I repaired it up to green. Now we can just hang out in this room and these two robots become kind of like us. But um, the beauty of these robots is they can pick shit up. They can bring stuff back to me. When they encounter a specimen, I'm going to triple check this, but um, I had read that they don't have to do the same checks that um, we do when we hit the reaction phase when we deal with a specimen. So they can basically just walk right in there, grab that, bring it back to us for us to put on. We can go and get this uh, stun rod. Um, I'm not sure which one would be better off taking out. There's a stun gun in there, so I guess that makes sense. We'd go and take this guy out because the stun rods and stun gun and stun bomb are a one-use item. Once you've used them, they are out of the game. Uh, you can't use them anymore. So we've kind of hit a jackpot here. All our levels are looking really good. There's still one that hasn't been discovered. Uh, it's going to be on this level. So uh, Chair Driss is working on this Enviro pod because I'd like to get that up to nine as well. But um, if things keep going the way they are, he's going to just be working on this last pod while um, Scrawling maybe has a, a chance to find the last one and uh, in turn win the game. Uh, so yeah, there's some new things that have happened I wanted to fill you in on. Uh, first time this has happened to me, being able to control these bots like this, so that's fairly exciting. We'll see how that all plays out. So as seems to be the way, um, I was sure that I read that somewhere, but basically everything that I've read is that um, robots act as basically another crew member or another player in the game. So specimens react to them the same way that they would if it was me walking in there. So we do have to do all the regular checks, uh, see how this creature reacts to the bots. Um, if he decides to fight, it'll be what had happened before or thought was going to happen before where we'll decide who he's going to attack. The bonus of this right now, because I have two of them, something that I forgot to mention in this last little bit, um, was that they also have a port capability which is the ability to carry stuff as well so they really are like other players they can they can fight and defend and carry stuff and, and all that so it'll, this might work out really well if we can stun this creature one of the bots hopefully will be able to carry it back to the restraint pod you see there and the other one will be able to take the piece of gear and bring it back to us here so we can continue cleaning up this level. Well, that was pretty great. Um, what happened? We went into the room. The Scrod left the room. This The Scrod fled, so we did our random dice roll, and it ended up he went in here. We followed him in there, um, discovered that there was nothing else in the room, because if I'm going to treat them like... Uh, crew members, I'm going through the whole nine yards. Nothing was in there. We uncovered the nav pod, which is the last one we need on our track there. Um, in our equipment phase, which is the last step of our turn phase, you can choose to attack. We decided, screw it, we're going to try to attack this guy. Um, his stats came out 
the impair rating was a two but his shield rating was all the way up at nine we managed to knock him down to six um, because you combine the total attack um, so what happens is their total impair rating is a three their total shield rating is a ten which is pretty great because that the two minus the ten puts him in a negative number which gets him at the zero table where he can only do damage on a five or a six and I'm just realizing I was reading the wrong table I was reading the one table so we had some hits at four so that's gonna alter things but I'll just walk you through it anyway every time every time uh, we attack him his shield keeps coming down every time he attacks us um, the bot status goes down a level so they were both at green so it would go down to yellow then go down to red now the the other thing to remember with this is it's one of him attacking two of us um, I believe it was in the house rules summary where the thought behind that was if you have multiple assailants if it was uh, two people attacking say a crew member and the crew member retaliates He's only going to be able to hit one of the uh, assailants at a time. Um, so same would go for here. So basically you roll a die and see who gets attacked. I was just doing it like one to three. It's the U-Bot, uh, four, five, and six. It's the Emery bot um, But like I said, I, I just realized I read that chart wrong. So I'll sort all that out and see where we stand. But um, we've managed to take quite a few jabs at him uh, as well. So uh, maybe this situation will work itself out. Um, and then if it does, it'll be a fact of figuring out how much he weighs and trying to drag him back. Uh, looking at the stats on this ar uh, armor rig, um, it's port, or sorry, it's a, uh, its weight is hefty. Um, repair. Sorry. Just peeking over top here. Its weight is nine. Uh, the same as each of the bots. Their weight is nine as well. Um, so, but their port ability is only, between the two of them, is only seven, so they won't be able to drag that piece back. But now that we've made a path, uh, Scrawling can always walk away from his control once this fight is done, get over there to grab that piece of gear and then go and clean house kind of thing. So that's where we stand. I'll uh, play some more and I'll come back. Okay, new phase of the game and a whole slew of new uh, rules and um, things that I've set myself straight on. So, um, I can't remember where we left off. Um, Imribot and Ubot did their best against the Scrod, got him down to a three shield from a nine, what he started with. Um, he eventually, though, beat them both and now they're both sitting there in red status which you can see on those chits there um, so they're useless to us uh, scrawling made a run for it to get that um, armor rig and put the armor rig on which changed all his stats uh, some for the better some for the worse uh, shield for example was better it brought a shield up to a seven uh, and it was a five. Um, Scrawling had a really good impair rating of a nine. It brought it down to a two. Uh, brought his port, how much he can carry, up to an eight when it was a six before. Um, so first thing that I learned, stun rod, stun gun, uh, no effect on people if you're not, you don't have to be wearing any sort of armor rig like I thought. So that was a mistake on my part. The only one that you do need to be wearing a rig is if you have a stun bomb, then that affects everybody in the pod. And if you're not wearing a rig, it's going to stun you as well. Uh, the other interesting piece of information I found out was, where's my pen pointer? Um, 
if you look on the stun gun, you see that 2S uh, stun rod, 3S specubot, 5S. The S, you can use these weapons in two different ways. If you want to use it as just a regular weapon, that one is going to count for 2 impair. This one is 3 impair, and that would be 5 impair. And that's basically, again, that's your attack value. That attack value, you minus their shield from it, which gives you the number to look down on the table. Now, if you decide to use it in its stun function, you triple that value. So this becomes a 6, this becomes a 9, this becomes a 15 attack, which I didn't realize till after I'd finished the battle using the stun rod that I should have just used the 15 attack. It didn't matter. I ended up stunning Shazam anyway. Um, but so it makes these two kind of useless to me uh, because this bot is following me around everywhere anyway. Um, we can combine our attacks when we're going to attack somebody. So we're kind of unstoppable between the two of us. I mean, Scrawling's impair is 9. His is 15 when we use the stun. There isn't much we're going to come across that's... Uh, going to be useless against us. So I think I might end up just ditching this armor rig because um, it's just making me heavier. It's downplaying some of my abilities. Again, the only thing that is good for it right now is its port rating, being able to carry things. Um, we did a weight check on Shazam and he actually weighs a 5. But again, it's okay because his port is a 3, my port is a 6, brings us to a 9, um, 8, 7, 6, it'll still allow us to carry this comp kit and Shazam, we can put him in the restraint, we can go and fix that nav pod, kill off Scrod, put him away. Um, I think we're reaching the inevitable end here that's going to see a uh, scrawling uh, win the game. Um, Chargeris has been having no luck over here repairing this Enviropod. Um, he's been going turn after turn with with not much action on it. It's up to a 7. Um, I could walk away from it, but I, I don't really see the point in getting in the way of everything that's happening here. I'd much rather have him continue fixing and get it all the way up to the 9, which You'll see why that is when I check back in with you when I try to restart the ship, which looks like that's the point we're going to get to. Okay, so here we go. Um, Chargris, or Charbris, or however the hell you say his name, he ended up fixing the Envirocon, or pod, and kind of working his way up just to discover these last two pods. Um, scrawling in the Specubot, took care of business as far as uh, what, who was it there? The Scrod, I think. The Scrod was in there. Uh, yeah, Scrod stunned and got uh, a massive six victory points for pulling that off. Um, then they've been working on the nav pod and they've just repaired it. So I'll show you now. So all of the levels are on nine and I'll show you now why that's important. So we have a restart table here. So um, the system level, if the system level is on 4, uh, you have to roll a 1 to restart it. If it's on 5, it's a 1 or a 2. If it's at 6, it's a 1 to a 3, etc, etc. So on a 9, you know, I'm not even going to go through the motions of rolling the dice. When the levels are on a 9, um, you have to throw a 1 all the way to a 6. Um, to be able to start that particular system and you have to go system by system so again because all of my systems are on six we can say that uh, scrawling is uh, the person who is going to get the 25 points now the other thing that I realize that's happened is there's no other critters to discover. There's no other specimens to discover. So if I wanted to play this game out even longer, um, 
there's mouse that has to be captured and put in a uh, restraint pod. There's Typhoo over here that has to be put in a restraint pod and Mother up there that should be put in a restraint pod. That would be the full extent of the game. Um, now just going around and cleaning up. But again, it's, it's, it's late here and I'm getting wiped out. So, eh, and I, I think the the way that it stands right now, um, these are the points here so far. I haven't added the 25 points yet, but already scrawling has got uh, 12 points plus his 25. Um, Charibdis, Charibdis, or whatever his name is, he's only got one. So even if he goes around and collects everything else, um, I don't think he stands a chance. So I'll check it again. I'm, I'm pretty sure it said in the rules, you take all your points that you've accumulated throughout the game and you subtract all of these numbers from it and that leaves your uh, victory score total. Um, so yeah, like I said though, we can, we can confirm that Scrawling has won the game. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, what started off being a setting the message straight, setting the record straight as far as the rules go, led us to uh, a full game where I completed the whole damn thing for the first time. So very exciting. Um, great game. Great game. I really, really like it. I really feel I've got a handle on it now. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to playing it with everybody else this weekend. Thanks very much for watching.